Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. As another continuation of the topic of faults, I figured we'd talk about the components of a fault. So I've just got this simple two-dimensional fault diagram. You can tell here it's a normal fault because the foot wall has been upthrown such that this, whatever uh, piece of rock it may be, this strata, has been shifted upwards on the left side compared to the right side. So one of the first components we can talk about is this right here. It's always the upper angle, the upper left angle on the hanging wall, or the upper right if it's facing the other way and the foot wall were over here. But this right here is called the angle of dip. And dip is a, con is a concept that we use a lot in geology, and you'll, you'll see it in multiple instances. But just pertaining to faults here, this is our angle of dip. Um, side note, usually uh, normal faults have much steeper or yeah, much steeper angles of dip, usually somewhere between the 85 to 75 degrees range, whereas reverse faults are generally somewhere more around 45-ish. Or they can get as low as that, rather. But next to the angle of dip on this side, we have a unique angle in that you draw this where this line meets, where this line meets this line. You kind of draw a little, just a straight line downwards, such that it would be perpendicular to this bottom piece here. And this little angle in here is called our angle of Hade. H-A-D-E. It's not that important, honestly, but it does exist. Um, you won't see it used in many instances, not nearly as much as dip. But just be aware that it is there. And moving away from angles, if we look at the vertical and horizontal components of the displacement between these two pieces of the strata. Right here, if we go from bottom piece on this one up to the upper boundary of the strata on this one, this right here is known as our throw. It is the vertical displacement that the bed of strata experiences. So, you know, when, when it's together the throw is zero, um, but since there is a, a vertical displacement between it, um, it now has a throw value. And excuse me, I actually did mess that up. It should be from top piece to top piece, not from bottom piece here to top piece here. Either top to top here or bottom to bottom. And that's your throw. And complementing throw, we have this here. If you kind of draw a horizontal component from this piece to this piece between the two edges. And once again, we're going from the bottom to the bottom pieces here. So we're going from this corner on this piece of the strata to this corner on this piece of the strata. This little horizontal displacement here is known as the heave or occasionally known as the want heave. So those are four simple components. Angle of dip, the upper angle on the uh, the upper angle that is next to the actual fault itself on the hanging wall always, and then the angle of hade is next to it on the uh, foot wall, and then the throw and the heave are the vertical and horizontal uh, components of the displacement of the strata itself, respectively. Okay, it's also important to talk about these components on an oblique slip fault. So you can kind of imagine where they would be, even though it's in a 3D block diagram, we use similar things. Just imagine these two, when determining the throw and the heave, just as two-dimensional. Try to push them back to where they would be flat. And you can say, well, if these two were aligned perfectly, then the throw would look something like this. It would go down and yeah, maybe top to top somewhere around there. That's the amount of displacement that has occurred to bring this one down or this one up. We, we're not entirely sure where the movement occurred, but we know that now there is some noticeable displacement. So we would call this the throw and then the 
heave, just the, uh, the horizontal displacement that has occurred between the two of them. So just uh, draw a little line such that this forms kind of a little 90 degree triangle, a right triangle there. And this little guy right here, that's the heave. Simple enough. And there's two or technically three other components to talk about, specific to oblique slip faults. We can actually create names for um, the ways in which it behaves somewhat like a dip slip and somewhat like a strike slip fault. And those are simply called the dip slip and strike slip components, respectively. So you'll call dip slip refers to the vertical displacement of a fault. So if we look at this here, you know, just... And this is, this is different th from the throw because this is a distance that goes along this slanted surface here. The throw is just measuring straight up along this flat two-dimensional surface. This is actually going along a slanted surface, so technically it is taking in two, um, two dimensions, really. And then, of course, the strike slip component comes from the displacement along this same slanted edge in this direction in the sideways direction. How much was this one moved this way or this one moved this way? So we just label those. This is the dip slip component. And this is the strike slip component. Simple enough if you understand what a dip slip and a strike slip fault is. And finally, from these, if we do a little vector addition here, then we simply get the this little line here. And that is just the net oblique slip. So that's just a way of quantifying the um, obliqueness of an oblique slip. Um, and if you measure this angle here, then you can, you can determine how much of it was dip slip, how much of it was strike slip. You can compare the components to each other. And those are all fun mathematical operations to do. But for now, this has just been an introduction to the components that you can look at in terms of numbers on a fault. Uh, hopefully it was informative, otherwise a good review. Keep doing the geology, and I'll see you all in the next video.